for a number of years and uh, when he retired I carried on the job as cashier um, from the main London office and um, stayed with the company until um, finally we were um, bought out as it were distillers company was bought out by Guinness and um, all the London staff including myself were made redundant I um, I decided at that stage when I was what 51 52 to retrain which I did as a driving instructor and um, having taken a year or so to pass my ADI exam I then started teaching um, I bought a car and did the job on my own as a one-man band for the next um, nine or so years I, I packed up in my early 60s um, things were getting a bit slack and um, my wife Frances was still working so um, I just um, I just packed up and uh, became a, a housekeeper really and let Frances carry on um, with her job in the Ilford County Court and um, I stayed at home and uh, got the steak and chips ready for the evening meal. <laughs> um, we were going to um, talk about the VC family name as weren't we as well what you remember do you remember a little bit about the VC family name? Mm. Yeah the um, the the name VZ um, uh, I believe is of Norman um, beginnings and um, there there is um, a church um, in Norfolk called Hintusham Parish Church and in the church um, in the very front of the church um, there's a shield on the wall marked VZ V-E-S-E-Y -E -E and um, it depicts sheaves of wheat and puffins so our forebears presumably were farmers or people um, of the sea um, maybe fishermen uh, the puffins being um, the bird you know uh, depicted in the shield so um, uh, that goes back to the 1600s and I think from memory there is a grave um, in, in the churchyard there of Sarah VZ um, and I believe that is marked 1600, 1603 or thereabouts. Mm. And um, you talked a little bit about your childhood, <clears throat> do you remember, did you have any games or toys, were there anything you played when you were growing up? Well, we, we, we were... Um, I think like most children in those days, um, toys weren't um, uh, all that um, sort of to the fore really. We, I can certainly remember as a lad in, in Somerset being probably eight, nine years old, um, I had a farmyard set with little lead cows and sheep and horses and um, we used to um, sit for hours on the grass and um, play with these little farmyard things um, making um, sort of trips with a horse and cart to and from the fields and, and, and pretending we were gathering the hay etc so um, that, that was quite um, uh, I suppose quite, quite an excitement as opposed to children now with their playstations and all the modern gadgetry um, which wasn't even in anybody's mind at that stage of the game. Did you have a bicycle? Um, my sister had a bicycle but um, I think um, I used to pinch a ride on that from time to time but um, no we, we didn't um, we didn't really have bicycles and um, things of that nature. And what sort of events do you remember, uh, sort of uh, Christmases or, 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 or major family events? Do you have any sort of specific memories of things like that? Well, we'd been, once again, in the country. We used to go and 
cut holly from the hedges and um, we used to, I think like most school children, used to make paper chains out of um, coloured papers which we made into rings and joined up so that um, uh, we had flour and water to use as a glue and we hung up across the room um, which was a, um, a far move from the modern stuff that they do now with all the wonderful chains and tinsel but um, it suited us at the time and um, uh, helped to make a Christmas. I don't, I don't think we were ever um, given massive presents but um, we had a stocking which was probably um, uh, filled with something like a few nuts and an orange and, and maybe an apple and a bar of chocolate but there wasn't much available and um, you might have had a puzzle or, or um, something on those lines or even if you were lucky a torch um, so uh, uh, Christmas was a, a bit of a gamble, but you didn't you didn't sort of think much about it because you didn't expect a lot. And was there when you came back from your uh, time uh, in the countryside? Was there a lot of bomb damage and things still in London? Was it uh, still signs oh, yes. of the war? Yeah, London London was well well blitzed, and although we lived in the East End. Um, and obviously our own flat was um, intact. Um, you only had to walk a, a street or a half a street away to find, you know, three or four, half a dozen buildings still waiting to be repaired. The, the, I think the government got on and, and repaired and made houses um, habitable as quick as they could, but a lot of people um, still lived in... Um, quite quite um, primitive sort of conditions I think and um, uh, maybe compared to pictures you see of Berlin which was virtually raised to the ground L London wasn't quite as bad as that but it was it was heavily hit and especially around the dock area and the East End um, where uh, the bombers would concentrate for the shipping and did you ever hear any bombs or see any uh, well, action, as it were? No, funnily enough, I mean, Mother must have been like most of the parents um, at the outbreak of war, wanted to get us away to safety. So we went off and, um, as I said, we lived in Somerset and um, there was one story <laughs> where um, uh, a bomber attacking uh, the Bristol docks um, returning obviously to Germany um, must have um, got rid of its last bomb which fell in the field and killed 13 cows somewhere near Shepton Mallet and of course that was the talk of the village then they thought the whole world uh, war had, had come to Somerset but uh, no one no one was injured only the animals So um, you, after the war, then you say you were working at Johnny Walker's, and, um, and and then obviously you met your wife. Do you want to tell us a little bit about that, where you met and uh, what you did? Well, when when I was um, at school, we had um, we were an all boys school, and um, we had um, uh, an English master called Rose. In fact, the two. Um, the two schoolmasters I remember quite clearly in my mind even now uh, is a chap called Baxter who was the maths master and Rose who was the English master and um, as opposed to today's um, sort of loose um, attitudes in school we all had to sit up and say good afternoon sir when he walked in the classroom and um, if we didn't have our books and pens and pencils and everything on us, um, we were taken to task immediately. But um, back to Mr. Rose, he, um, he taught us to dance, which he said was one of the social attributes. And um, at the age of 15, we could all dance quite reasonably. 
and um, we used to get the girls in from the local grammar school and have uh, a record hop on a Wednesday night to Victor Sylvester Records and um, as a consequence everybody of my age group danced at that time, ballroom dancing which was quite a pleasant art and the local town halls and public halls all held uh, dances on usually Friday, Saturday and even Sunday and um, during one of these um, dance meetings at um, one of the uh, swimming bars which they used to put uh, a dance floor down over the swimming pool um, I met Francis and um, we started going out together and um, eventually married so um, that was my first meet up with my to be wife um, dancing which was quite a uh, an easy way of being introduced to a young lady by asking her to dance so um, that, that made uh, life um, quite pleasant and someone to um, to talk to without a formal introduction <laughs> did you have to go and ask permission to marry Francis did you have to do it on your knee or anything <laughs> well not not quite as bad as that but um, I did actually say to Francis' father, John Murray, um, do you have any objections if I was to marry Francis? She was under 21 at the time, and he said, no, no. He said, you, um, uh, you know, you, you're quite welcome to go ahead if that's your wish. So um, we, we we married. I was 24, and Francis was coming up to 21. Mm. And then, could you live together? Could you afford to live together at that time? Or well, we um, we had um, Francis Grandpa, who lived in Albury Road in Seven Kings, had a big old house, thirteen rooms, if I remember rightly, and um, some of the top part of the house was empty, and he said that um, if we wanted, we could um, rent three or four rooms at the top of the house. I think we rented um, three of the rooms, a bedroom, a dining room and the kitchen, which were, I think, the servants' quarters for this big old house in the sort of latter part of the 18th century. And um, we stayed there for um, several years, um, probably, I think, three, three and a half years, until um, we managed to save a deposit and then we bought our own house some half a mile away in um, in Seven Kings. And then obviously at that time you then you were still commuting into London, were you then? <coughs> yeah, I had um, retained my job at Johnny Walker's obviously and um, <coughs> was still working more walkers and going into into London every day on the tube and um, as I said previously I stayed there until I was made redundant um, in my early 50s and uh, what, do you want to uh, describe your your wedding day a little bit how what happened how did that um, did it cost a lot of money <coughs> <laughs> well, I don't think weddings did in those days, but um, um, we we had um, uh, a wedding um, in a church which is only just round the corner from us here, and um, we had uh, a hall. We hired a hall for the evening function, which was in Ilford, and um, uh, I think everything went pretty much according to plan. Um, um, most things um, were fairly well organised and we had a, a small band and um, uh, we had um, a, a meal and um, I think one of the things that um, stuck in my mind was the fact that um, I, I had uh, taken my old car to the church and a friend of mine drove the car 
to the reception area and um, it was an old Morris 8 and in pulling the handbrake on one of the brake cables had broken so we were due to go off on our honeymoon that night we we booked an overnight B&B in Kent and um, we, we were then going to travel down to the coast but as the handbrake had broken we were a bit concerned that um, it might be a bit dangerous so um, we went into Ilford itself and um, there happened to be a car hire place still open and um, uh, I, I told the man there that um, we were going off on our honeymoon and my car had got this problem so he said well we can hire you a little three gear Ford uh, which was quite modern compared to my old car and we hired that for three days I think it was and left my car in his garage and off we went and um, had our uh, few days honeymoon so didn't have long honeymoons in those days you couldn't afford it but two or three days and um, you were then sort of back in the grind getting back to work so that was that was the state of things. At was that, that really your first holiday then? Because I know you uh, you went to Switzerland as well, didn't you? Which must have been that was your first time ever going abroad, was it? Well, we had um, we had an old accountant who used to come into the pay office, um, Mr. Grimes. I remember him quite well, and um, he and his wife, who was a school teacher, um, used to run. Um, a holiday um, routine every year and they take friends and office colleagues abroad and he said to me at um, that time because we got married in the November and um, towards the end of that year when he came in he said oh, are you going on holiday this year and uh, I said well we hadn't given it a great deal of thought and he said, well, we're going to Switzerland. So he said, if you want to come to Switzerland with us in, I think it was the June or July, um, you and Francis can come and it will cost you 45 pounds, I think it was. So, so we decided that we'd go abroad as we'd never been abroad before. So um, off we went to Switzerland to... Um, Lake Lucerne to a little um, uh, lakeside um, village, I suppose you'd call it, called we Vegis. I think it's spelled W E double G I S, Vegis, Vegis. And um, we had, um, I think it was a week there, which was rather pleasant because um, you had all the mountains and the lakes around, so that was um, a very nice. Um, picturesque holiday for us and as we'd never been abroad before it was quite an exciting thing to do so we took that as a delayed honeymoon really to make up for a two or three days in uh, Eastbourne. <laughs> Had you flown to Switzerland? Did you fly? Or? We flo flew, um, no no sorry we didn't know um, we, we went on the train actually dear old Perse, Percy Grimes was very um, economical with his mummy and our mummy so he'd arranged for us to um, meet in London at um, one of the stations and we, we got a train and a ferry and um, we ended up going through to Switzerland on the train. So quite a long journey really, but um, as we were only young, it didn't really make a great deal of difference. I expect flying was very expensive then as well, was it? Well, I think flying was yeah. um, uh, not... Um, not as easy as it is now with package holidays and um, all the things that um, uh, appertain to present holidays. It's so it's so 